Okay, so here is 4.1 using graphs to relate two quantities. First thing I want to talk about is reviewing uh, real quick the coordinate plane. So if you look at uh, the points, like if you look at point K, remember you always got to go X comma Y. So point K is at uh, 2, 1. So remember that's that's 2, 1. That's a two comma one, okay, and then uh, point n would be at the origin. Point n would be at zero comma zero, and then you got point p, which is at negative two comma one, and point l. Let's see, go to the left and three ticks, so negative three and up four, and then point m is to the right three and down. 2, so that's 3 comma negative 2. So hopefully you remember those from before. Alright, so uh, let's look at um, analyzing a graph. So you have two things here. Um, you have uh, two graphs. The one on the left is talking about board length. And the two, what are the two variables on the graph here? The two variables you have is time and length. So how are the variables related at various points of the graph? So if you look at this part right here, how is, what, what does this mean? As time goes on, what can you say about the length of the board? This means, <coughs> this means that the board remained the same length constantly. And then it had a sharp dip. What happened there? Must mean that they cut the board. Then for a period of time, it remained constant. Then they took another, at this point, they sliced the board again. It remained constant. And then they sliced the board again. And then over time, it remained constant. <coughs> now, for the board length one, another question you want to ask yourself is, how many times is the board cut? And when you think, looks like it's cut once. Looks like it's cut once, twice, three times maybe? Another question is, how many pieces of board are there at the end of the time shown? Probably four pieces of board, wouldn't you say? Let's take a look at the second one. The June cell phone cost. So what are your two variables here? Here you have a variable, the the variable on the y-axis is cost, and the variable on the x-axis is minutes of calls. So if you see right here, the cost was constant for this period of time, and then what happened? It looks like it went up. At this point right here, they probably went beyond their uh, call limit, and they had to move, uh, pay extra per minute that they called. That's that constant rate and then over here is the rate of change going upward. Okay. And let's look at another one. Okay, so here is a, a table of values. And let's look at the table of values and think about if we were to graph this, what it would look like. If you look at the x-axis, it's the number of uses or the, excuse me, the top part is number of uses and then the amount of sunscreen. So each one of these A, B, and C have um, the same thing. They have the, uh, they have the uh, x-axis as the number of uses and the y-axis as the amount of sunscreen. But if you were to plot these, you got 0, 5 ounces then you have 1 comma 4.8 and then 2 comma 4.6 and then 3 comma 4.4 so if you look at this you have to think is is it rate differencing is it is it constant that's the question is it a constant difference if you subtract 5 and 4.8 you get i believe 0.2 and if you subtract 4.8 from 4.6 you get 0.2 if you subtract 4.6 from and 4.4, you get 0.2. Now, which one of these graphs, A, B, or C, is um, 
is it constantly going down? And then, yep, you've guessed it. It's probably going to be this one right here. A is the one that you're uh, most likely going to um, fix it, right? So should the horizontal distance between the points in the um, shown in the correct graph be constant? Well, yeah, because there's a constant difference of 0.2. All right. So looking at um, the next one, it says a model rocket. It says a model rocket is rises quickly and then and then slows to a stop as it feels burns out. It begins to fall quickly until the parachute opens, after which it falls slowly back to Earth. What sketch of a graph could represent the height of the rocket during its flight? Label each section. Okay, so for that one, what do you think? For this one, I think if we labeled it, you'd have to have. If we labeled it, you'd have to have a. Change my pen color here. You have to have it. Something looks like this. All right on the x or on the x axis, you're going to have time. And the y axis, you're going to have height. Now, what happened? A model rocket quickly rises, then slowly, and then slows to a stop as its fuel burns out. It begins to fall quickly until the parachute opens. So I guess if you say over time this thing shoots up very quickly, right? And then once its fuel burns out, it starts to drop. It, it stops rising, so it reaches a peak, and then it starts to come down. And then with the parachute open, it falls ever so slightly back down to earth All right so what you could do is you could say this is uh um quickly rises right that's the quickly rises part this is runs out of fuel right and this is with the chute open right this is with the chute open right there Okay, so you think you got it? Uh, what about this one? Suppose you start to swing yourself on a playground swing. You move back and forth and swing higher in the air, then you slowly swing to a stop. What sketch of a graph could represent how your height from the ground might change over time? Label each section. <clears throat> so this one's in your guided notes. You probably want to take a look at <coughs> Excuse me. You probably want to take a look at that one and see which one fits the best thing. Ask yourself what's going on the X, what's going on the Y, and you're moving back and forth, and you swing higher in the air. So your x-axis is time, and your y-axis is height. So be mindful of that. See if you can get that, um, and you can answer in class. Now it's important when you're going through your guide notes that you go ahead and you do the lesson check and do you understand so um, I'll be looking for that in class uh, hopefully this video helps and uh, I'll see you um, in class tomorrow and may the force be with you